Bullseye, I wish I was in Carlinville, Illinois right now. I could be seeing what's going on with Johnny, new Johnny X and his turbo. You don't seem to care though, do you? It's a long drive, so there's no way we can really get over there for every little step of this project. And thankfully, uh, the folks at Area Diesel Service have been shooting some video. So how about if we share some of that with you? Let's take a look now. Uh, today we're going to start taking these parts off of here. Uh, we're going to try to get the muffler off, the tube off here, um, the downpipe off of this thing. Uh, we've done some of my other work and uh, as far as servicing this thing, took the fuel filters out of here, changed them out. We also pulled the air filter out and a warning to Tim, you've got to keep this thing clean. Here's a new one, here's the old one. This will restrict the air coming into the turbo and cause it to could cause it to leak oil with a contaminated filter. So this will go in when the turbo goes on. This will go in the trash can. Okay, so we have this adapter that's gonna go on the manifold uh, that Dusty made back at our machine shop. And uh, we're going to put it on after we get the parts off of here so we can start mocking up the turbo to see where the uh, oil drain needs to go into the valve cover. And also on the downpipe, we're going to need to modify it to be able to get to the turbo discharge. So let's get to it this morning. Let's start taking some parts off. All right, let's start by taking this down pipe off of here. Oh, that wasn't very tight. We'll set that aside for now. Nice thing about these little engines is they don't use a lot of lock washers or flat washers or anything, and once you break things loose, they usually screw off very easily by hand. Put this muffler off of here. I know there were several comments in the first video that Tim posted about retaining the muffler, getting rid of the muffler, the turbo will quiet the engine. All those things are interesting ideas. The turbo will quiet the engine down slightly. Um, it won't be like a big old straight pipe running out of the thing, but uh, space-wise and everything else, we're probably got, not going to reuse this muffler. We are going to try to retain the factory location for the downpipe, however, on here. So. You know, we talked earlier about potentially using a straight pipe up out of the hood or some other approaches to change how the exhaust works, but I really like the choice they've made here of trying to keep the exhaust in a stock position. I think this is gonna be the easiest approach, and I think if we ever do make a kit out of this, it'll be an approach that um, most of you guys would prefer as well. How about you, Bullseye? So we're going to remove this intake air pipe tube. And probably won't be reused. Maybe the hose clamps. Okay, so now we've pretty much opened up our manifold to see where we're going to be there. Um, we do know that we're going to drain back into the top or the bottom side of the valve cover here for our oil to return back to the engine. So the valve cover will have to come off as well. Um, there's another plate that we've made to go on here because that's where our breather is going to be for the crankcase ventilation. So I'll go ahead and take it loose here too. Should have done this earlier. Don't want to drop anything down the intake or the exhaust. So crankcase ventilator will go on here. Again, Dusty and Gary in the machine shop have machined this plate for us um, that will ultimately go back on top of here with a fitting and a vent hose over the side of the engine for crankcase ventilation since we're not going to recirculate it back into the intake because it's now going to be pressurized. So that'll come along later. For now we'll do that. At this point we've already seen two parts that they've specially machined for this project. Keep watching, I think we're going to see more of them. Okay, we're going to Get this little guy on here. Ultimately, we're going to try to uh, retain this piece back in the project. We do have to do a little bit of trimming on here to get it to go back over 
the studs and the studs will have to be a little bit longer but for what we're doing today trying to determine where we're going to go with the oil drain we're just going to put a couple nuts on this thing and call it good for now all right we've got the turbo and i've got the bolts out of it here so what we're trying to do is figure out the alignment to for the drain to go back into the valve cover dusty's made a plate to go on here with a kind of a pointer rod so we can get an idea of the angle of the bearing housing because it needs to be as straight up as possible within 10 degrees either direction of vertical so this is going to kind of give us an idea where we're going to hit the valve cover we'll clamp it together take it back and we'll measure the angle that we're at to make sure we're still good for for good drain of the little turbo so I've taken these bolts out I'm going to put the put the exhaust housing on the manifold isn't it a cute little thing so let's get to it. I don't have the studs made for this yet, so we're just going to put some bolts in here to align it on the bolt holes, and then I'll use a clamp to hold it down to keep it from wiggling on us once we get it aligned. I'm going to just snug one, and we'll use this clamp and hold it down here. So we're good there. I'll we'll take this little guy. All right, now we can kind of see where we're going to be contacting that valve cover. I'm going to rotate it around till it touches. All right, so let's mark that intake. As long as it stays on there long enough, and I'll put a center punch mark on it when we get out of the way. Also, a little mark here. So we know how to align this when we get it back to the machine shop again and what we'll need to do on this is <clears throat> since this turbine housing is not made to orientate the bearing housing with the three odd shaped bolts here or the odd shaped pattern once we figure out the angle that we want to stick at on here we'll re-drill and tap the turbine housing to position this thing where we want it Okay, now that we have that out of the way, I am going to put just a little center punch mark here to, uh, in case my magic marker line gets erased, we'll still have something. And then we're also going to go down here and lightly do this valve cover. So when that line gets erased, we kind of still have an idea of where we're going with this. Let's get this exhaust pipe on and see how far away it is from where it needs to live. A little bit of adjustment in this slot here which may help us later but this thing as you guys know runs pretty close to the alternator here so now looking at that we know that we need to obviously extend it and get it over here lined up with the turbine housing better um, we're going to do something with a plate on the outlet of the turbo so we've had this plate made and it will bolt on to the back of the turbo here and from there we will use it to go made up with our exhaust pipe somehow we may don't know yet and we'll see how far we get or what works out best but we may do a little v-band type of coupling for the exhaust pipe probably have to remake these to a different length or something but um, we got to get from there to there so that's what we're looking at it looks like we are going to be in the way of this overflow tank here by extending this pipe up but maybe not, but for right now, let's get it out of the way so we can try to uh, get a better visual on this thing. We'll set it aside for now. Kind of gives us an idea of where we got to go. Uh, looks like we need to move over two or three inches. Obviously come up about the same. So if we can get that by lengthening the pipe in here somewhere or maybe down here but I don't think that's the end of the world. So let's go ahead and take this turbine housing back off, get the valve cover off for now, and then we can uh, take it back to the machine shop and see if we can get some things done here. And yes, for those guys commenting on the first video, we are gonna put a pyrometer in here, but we wanna get it pretty close to done before we figure out, or so we can figure out where we have the most room to put a pyrometer probe in it, at least just for testing purposes when we get it back on the dyno. Careful when you do this at home, you're going to realize that some of these bolts are longer than the other ones. I'll let you guys figure that out where they go. Off. Let's take this back off of here. So 
So there it is. Inside the valve cover. Need to miss this baffle in here when we go in with our oil drain, but there's enough gap in there that uh, we may be able to get around that, but we'll see. May have to move that over. But that's it for now on this side. We'll go around to the other side and do some of where we're going to pick up the oil. We'll, we'll get the oil sending unit out of it. And All right, I'm going to cover this up, keep the dirt and stuff out of here. Oh, old shop t-shirts make for good rags. That way we don't drop anything in there. All right, down here we're going to remove the oil pressure sending unit. And that's where we're going to pick up our oil for the turbo feed on there. Now these threads are very close to eighth inch pipe, but the pitch is slightly different on this than eighth inch pipe is. Um, so I've previously tapped this out, which just basically chasing the threads and then flush the block out. Um, we are going to end up using an eighth inch close nipple and T, and then the oil pressure sending unit will go back in here. And we'll stick it in there for mock-up now to get our oil line made and then when we do the final we'll put some thread tape on this thing so it won't leak. I'll leave it pointed down a little bit for now so no dirt or anything gets into it. That's about all we're going to do over here for now until we figure out where we're going to go with our oil pressure feed line but we got work to do that's uh, on the turbo side of things, uh, it's a little more pressing than running an oil line at the moment. So that'll be all for that. We'll see where we can go from here. Well, that's the progress so far. I'm pretty excited about this. You know, we looked at several places where we might have this turbo project completed. Boy, am I glad we chose Area Diesel Service in Carlinville, Illinois. It's, it's clear that they know what they're doing. Did you see that detailed machining that they've already done? Um, there, there's a good bit of design that they've already put into this. And they can do that because they have the equipment, they have the skill, they have the staff to do this. Uh, it's, it's pretty impressive to me. There's no way I could have done this by myself. Uh, and maybe we could have got something going uh, with some local guys, but um, you know, I just, I, I feel really comfortable that we've chosen aerial diesel service for this project. I'm suspecting that next time we check in with Area Diesel, this machine will be running. Let's hope that's the case. Meanwhile, I hope you've enjoyed this. and Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. Pretty rough life, isn't it? <laughs>